Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It has been a while. We missed you. Well, I certainly have missed you. I don't know how Delta has felt, but I've missed no, you. No, I've missed you. I missed you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's been a oh. while. Well, I missed you, Delta. Where the fuck you been? <laughs> I've, been work I've been moving the last couple weeks, so I apologize for the you know the delay on that. And so, yeah, so we'll we'll try to back to you back to weekly content again soon. So, like this, is the plan is this weekend to keep going from there on out. Yeah, you've so. been heavily requested. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, we've been, we've been. I'm glad people are actually asking us, like, in you know, the other streams on the video game, the main channel, and everything, asking us like, what's going on with the wrestling channel. So I appreciate you guys actually care. So that's awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, here every week. So I'm definitely, definitely was looking forward to coming back to doing this stuff. So we're good. We're here. I'll be here every week. Yeah, I want to. That's a plan unless something happens. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to record uh, this show with anyone else, really. I mean, there's a reason the sign says "No Alex Allowed" in the corner. You know, <laughs> that's true. We don't want Alex here. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. We don't. <laughs> All right. So wrestling. Hey, if you haven't heard the news, Delta, wrestling is cool again. Rest it is cool. Wrestling is the shit again. And honestly, I kind of agree. <laughs> but that's it's only all thanks to the Rock. Exactly. You know. And he knows that. I know that. The crowd knows it. <laughs> Netflix knows it. The Rock, right. the Rock has still got it, and this is an example. This is this is prime Rock. This is the Rock I wanted against John Cena. So now I am convinced. When the Rock said that, like he was like limited on what he could say to Cena during their feud, I believe him. I mean, look what happens when the man is allowed to say what the hell he wants. <laughs> it's entertaining, you know. Calling the crowd crackheads, fat asses. I mean, come on, man. It's, it's and so... they cheer for it, which is even crazy. Yeah! <laughs> they cheer for it! That's the best part. I love it. <laughs> so, um, anyway, let's, uh, let's, uh, what's the first, The Rock is the first topic on our, on our list here. So, what I want to bring up is, I honest to God think, I don't think The Rock is going to turn on Roman at Mania. Uh, I think Seth Rollins is going to turn on uh, Cody Rhodes at Ray Mania people are, instead. People are assuming that a lot. A lot of people are speculating that's going to be the case. Because that storyline um, makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. We'll but, see. Yeah, no, I mean, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, right now, I mean, that's the thing, great thing about what I love about wrestling the most is, like, when it's unpredictable. That's exactly. what you... you is that's the best thing about it, especially especially wrestling like the road to WrestleMania. There's just so many potential outcomes here now. Versus like like the previous years, you kind of like guess the outline, the framework, how it's going to play out. Most likely, you might get a surprise here and there, but overall, you know how it's going to play out. Most likely, this is completely unpredictable. We have CM Punk now out of commission right now. Mm -hmm. You know, Seth Rollins is questionable. He supposedly is ready to go. Um, you know, and now anything could happen now. Now, like the, this whole tag team match right here that's going to happen night one. Now with uh, that we're talking about this week, I, like I don't know. Like it, it could go either way at this point. It I, can go either I, way. Yeah, I, I, I am of the belief that they're trying to make you think The Rock is going to turn on Roman because if you notice at the end of their promo on SmackDown, like that man. By the way, that was a thirty-minute-long in-ring segment. <laughs> If you didn't know, <laughs> uh, I think it was like 31 minutes long and you could feel it was 31 minutes long because like, there was really good moments in it with the rock opened up at the rock was repeating himself and constantly plugging in that this is the biggest WrestleMania match, the biggest title match in history, you know, <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, but that's, that's what wrestlers do. They oversell shit. They yep. make you want to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to be there. Right. On speaking Sunday of, night, I will be there. Ah, uh, speaking of which, man, this sounds crazy, but night one of WrestleMania, my brother has a baby shower. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, <laughs> I told him, "Hey, bro, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna show up for five minutes. I'm out." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Oh, that's not what brothers do for each other." Really, I'm dude. Like, Really, dude? I'm cool like, uh, I'm like, dude, I, I would ditch you to go watch Dune too any minute. <laughs> you gonna go watch wrestling, fool? Fool! <laughs> woo, 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 woo. <laughs> That's how my bro. Does. <laughs> I always tell my bro he sounds like a barking dog. He's like, oh, what? Why? Why you do that for? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, he um, I, I was really surprised because like uh uh, not that bro, but my other bro. 
that uh, moved back in with me, he um, he watches our wrestling stuff, and he's like, "You guys need to make an episode now, 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 now." Oh, <laughs> that's nice to hear. Oh yeah, that's no, nice dude, he loves. Uh, there's a lot of people who love wrestling podcasts because I do because they're great background noise. <laughs> they are. Sure I mean, they like, are. If you're like. For instance, in your job, like, uh, I imagine, like, listening to a podcast is really helpful on a long shift, you know? Oh, 100%. It gets you through it. And that's why I hate jobs that are like, no headphones. I'm like, fuck you. You know I'm suffering, and you want me to suffer. <laughs> exactly. So, anyway, uh, The Rock. <clears throat> so, The Rock um, established, basically, that it's going to be night one of WrestleMania. It's going to be Rock and uh, Roman versus Seth Rollins and the Story Boy. And I... Can't believe I'm saying this, but I, I, I want Cody and Seth to lose both nights. <laughs> because The Rock has, uh, when The Rock came back and we all were, like, pissed off thinking he took Cody's spotlight and anything, all he needed was to be put on the mic for five minutes to convince me, no, you're right, you should have taken his spot. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you're not wrong, you got a good point. Because, uh... This wasn't the only promo Rock had this week. Um, he also had that video he shot on his phone that he uploaded yeah. to YouTube. And I love that because that reminded me of the promo he shot and recorded during his Cena feud. Where when I first saw that, I was like, The Rock is going to totally destroy Cena on the mic if they get in the ring. Because that, that whole thing was amazing and that wasn't the case. But here we are and he's just verbally owning the crowd. His, he's owning the wrestlers, he's owning the commentators, he's owning all the people backstage, he's just, Rock is, Rock, like, gives no two fucks, you know, he, I don't, he's not worried about getting in trouble, by any means, and he really convinced me too, when he said to, like, Seth Rollins, <laughs> he's like, I'm the one who got us that Netflix deal, bitch, I'm the one who saved this company, I'm like, he's right, <laughs> He is literally right. The Rock is the reason we're here. So, Cody, you worked your ass off hard, and I agree. You just you still deserve your title match, but uh, I would definitely, I definitely wouldn't have minded if uh, if it was The Rock and Roman. Now, if this would have been the angle they were going to go with the whole time, I guess they were testing the waters with us, weren't they? <laughs> I, you, you, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, in my opinion, I think this whole situation right now, how they pivoted and uh, have made this the new outcome of things, I think it's way better than the original plan. Um, at least in my opinion, because like, I think all, anyone that's like, listening to this would all agree, a rock versus, you know, versus Roman match, anytime, would have been perfect. I mean, everyone would be hyped for it. Everyone would be excited for it. And I've told you the previous time, I don't think they needed a belt involved in that whole thing. I think the the Isle of Re Island of Relevancy and the the you know the title of Tribal Chief is enough to be on the line for their match. I don't need that match right there. Yeah. I think right now their pivot and how they've worked that pivot so well to this point, mm -hmm. it just shows right there like how versatile and how professional The Rock can be in terms of like, okay, I can yeah. listen to the crowd. I know what they what they want right now. I'm not gonna step on anything. I'm gonna just like I'm gonna pivot, but I'm also gonna try to like way to tie up any loose ends. And I think that that video that he did on his Instagram really kind of tied up a lot of loose ends. A lot of people are questioning. So how does this work exactly? Because we saw that whole kickoff uh, press conference, mm -hmm. and like Cody just basically just pulled like a complete 180 out of nowhere, We're going from like you know hugging the Rock and you know yeah he had like the the sad cuck dyed face you know in the <laughs> ring. Walking out and still looking all pitiful and everything, like a, like a doofus. You he know? looked like a total then, goof. <laughs> yeah, basically, and that's why everyone, that's why everyone was so pissed about. It. It's like you basically had this. Why'd you have this guy go and win the World Rumble not once but two times in the Euro, and hype that up, and then out of nowhere, here comes The Rock, and he's like, oh, "I'm taking the spot, Cody. Story's over, little bro." Okay. So, and he's like, and he's like yeah, cool. like, and then the, and then the next and then the next week he's like, "This is bullshit." Yeah. Like you said that you were supposed to say that the minute it happened. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was waiting for Paul Heyman just like kind of like stepping like, "Yeah, you might think it's bullshit, but you did say it's okay." Like literally the week prior, I know, and that's so, why uh, that's why that's why The Rock doesn't really seem like a heel in the situation because from The Rock's perspective, he's like, "I asked," and he said, "Okay," and then in front of the whole audience, he says something else, and I'm like, "Okay, that's that's actually that's a." 
good way to, to you know, tie in the storyline, right? Exactly. Because it made no sense. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, I, like, I'm, like, they didn't really talk about it, as far as I'm aware. They didn't really talk about The Rock's promo on his Instagram at all. As far as, I'm, like, I don't know the commentary team. Maybe I missed it. Maybe the commentary team mentioned it. But, like, if anyone that's listening to this, I highly encourage people to go watch the video. It should be on YouTube. Bro, that was the Rocks. Like a 15 minute promo on like, The Rock's part. He's like, you don't give a man like that a podcast. You give him a straight jacket. I'm like, ah! <laughs> yeah, that, that was some that was some heavy roasting involved in there. Bro, Holy The shit. Rock still has it. <laughs> He still, he still does. Has it. He still has especially it. Especially if you, especially if you let him loose and he's not tied down to any restrictions you know, for television. You know what I mean? Yeah. He can let, let loose and say "fuck your story" to Cody. That, that was, was awesome, dude. I, dude, uh, when Monday showed that to me, Monday's like, bro, when he said "fuck your story," Cody, I jumped up, bro. I was like, me too. Yeah, man. I was like, holy shit. I was, brother, I was, that's I was, crazy. I was showering, listening to the whole thing. And I like jumped yeah. in the shower. I'm like, yeah, you tell him. <laughs> almost slipped, almost slipped in the tub. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> but so you're, you're, now you're gonna be the dude in the Dreamcast. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we also talk about how poor Solo Sequoia caught a few strays from The Rock during this promo? <laughs> Oh, well, that whole thing with uh, him in the ring—that shit was funny as hell. I like how he was solo. Like, what, what the fuck? Yeah, you're part of the team. Yeah, it just <laughs> it's great because like Solo Sequoia, uh, like they're trying to write him off to be this badass character, but I have a feeling his fate's gonna be that of his like family members. He's gonna he's gonna become a comedic character over time. Just you, maybe. Wait. I mean, that's a, which I'm okay with because like I think he could sell. I, I think Solo Sequoia is a talent. He'll be able to do either the badass or the hilarious guy. Um, I liked his work in NXT against Gunter. Uh, that was some great stuff. Um, yeah. Anyway, as for uh, poor Jimmy, like, well, Jimmy has a match with his bro. <laughs> so- Jimmy, Jimmy is so unserious. That's, that's what I was kind of hoping, like, when they when they had the whole betrayal back in August with, with him, Jimmy and, and Jay and everything, I was kind of hoping, like, they build that up a bit better. I think that's the one thing. That, I don't know if like Vince was still involved at that time, you know, when before he got booted out. Like, but to, like I kind of wish like Jay would have like kind of fucked off for a couple months. Yeah, you know, it, it, it would have been you know what would have been, been awesome. And this is the fan of me thinking like it would have been awesome if he went to do like other promotions. Like you know they have All Japan Wrestling and stuff like that. They have a good relationship with them and TNA. I would have loved to have seen Jimmy like like Jay go fuck off there for like a couple promotions. Bro, like, that really would have been amazing. His yeah. Persona a bit, and then come back like during the Royal Rumble and everything, and yeah. like really build up. And then while you're doing that, you're building up Jimmy uh, up to like you know as a good talent, you know, because Jay could do everything on his own. Jimmy is the one I'm, I feel like needs more uh, creative done to him. That that so. is that that is actually pretty. I, I like your booking idea there. I think Jay should have suffered a beat down from his family and been off television until the Royal Rumble. And then if yeah. he would have like returned at the Royal Rumble, then the Royal Rumble would have been worth watching, I guess, because we didn't have any returns. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It would have been an awesome return right then and yeah. there. Like, you could see yeah. him back right then and there. That, that to me would have been a super hype up moment right there. It would have been, especially while you're doing that, you're building up Jimmy, you know, in the Bloodline storyline, rather than just keeping keep him as kind of like a comedic joke, unserious character throughout the whole thing. Yeah. I kind of wish the booking would have been better on that part, but uh, uh, so do you think, deliver it. Do you think uh, Grayson Waller is gonna is gonna be a new member of this bloodline? Because like the backstage segment that uh, Roman had with him, and it's like I mean this company really. I think Grayson Waller is entertaining, but I know some people that like my brother hates Grayson Waller. He's like that guy sucks. I'm like I don't think he's that bad. Uh, but it seems like they're trying to incorporate him with this Bloodline story. I don't know what, what he's going to serve. I don't even remember what they were talking about backstage in that segment. Do you? Uh, I mean, like, all I see is all the time is they acknowledge some. That's like, it just seems like, whatever. I, I don't look at, I don't look at Grayson Waller or, like, Austin Theory as serious contenders or anything. Like, I know they're trying to, like, start up some sort of feud with, uh, Randy and KO versus those two. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like it, we'll see how things manifest. We still have a couple of weeks left till Mania. Wow, well, you know, as as Roman said to uh, Austin before, Daddy's not home. <laughs> yeah, not home. And, and no, ever what? since then, ever since Vince is like completely out, like all of a sudden, like 
theory has been shoved down the mid card, if not. I, I don't really hit some high rise at that point. Remember that? The whole I am like the protege or the, yeah. Yeah, the protege of Physic Man. All of a sudden, as soon as Triple H took over during that small short stint period, all of a sudden <laughs> you went shoved back down the middle card and never came back up ever since. Well, he, <laughs> everything like he like was given was taken away almost immediately once Vince was gone and it was hilarious. It was like it was the funny. most obvious time like that guy was clearly giving Vince Felicia or something, you know? <laughs> like, it was something, man. I mean, he was clearly some kind of so he was doing something to make Vince want to give him that position, but Vince has always been known to try and push uh people. Like I mean, he did the same with Drew McIntyre like years ago. Uh years he tried to put ago. yeah, he tried to push on Drew McIntyre, Alex Riley. You remember Alex Riley? A lot of people forget yeah. Alex Riley. Yeah. Try pushing that guy. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, anyway, this has me hyped. Uh, I'm looking forward to both nights of WrestleMania, but I think I'm looking forward to night one more because I want to see The Rock and Roman versus these two real bad. <laughs> like, I, I really want to see this match. So I, any- I really do think, like, how things are going to play out. I think, I do think they'll end up losing that match. I, ho- um, I, I hope so because, like, I, I, so go ahead, go ahead. I, I think I think Seth will end up losing his match to Drew afterwards. Like that's the thing. It's like both these guys are doing double duty for night one and night two right there. So it's yeah. like it's just funny to see how they they this is all playing out. I never expected like wrestlers to have to like contend both nights now, and now that's a thing now. Like it's it's going to be really interesting how that plays out because so much unpredictable things that could happen now. It's, it's good, so. yeah, yeah, you, you could do a lot of storytelling with having a two-night thing, right? It's like, oh, night one, he sprained his ankle, can he win this match? And, you know, they'll tell an interesting story in the ring the next night, right? Uh, you know, old-school storytelling, but it, it, it is kind of cool to see, like, these wrestlers have to compete more than one night. You know, it makes you respect them a little more. You're like, finally, mm-hmm. toughness <laughs> for once. <laughs> you gotta be tough to be a wrestler is the whole idea. All right, well, now that we're done with that, let's move on to Mr. Dream McIntyre, who, you know, the minute he ditched that Claymore sword, finally became someone I could actually watch. <laughs> you know, so I am very I happy. Hope, I just hope he does. I hope he does end up, like, because I know, like, a lot of fans online have been, like, asking them to bring back Broken Dreams for him. It was and I movie. think what better way to do that is to bring him back for WrestleMania, especially, like, his whole character persona, it totally embodies that song more than this fucking Scottish theme right now. That's his, that's his baby face theme. Yeah. Switch it back to what it was before. You're you right. You, no, you're, you're 100% right. Um, that wasn't the last time he used uh, that theme. It was at Clash at the Castle, I believe. It was, yeah. And uh-huh. it was great. And the audience sang along with it. I mean, to be fair, the audience sings along with everything these days, but... <laughs> they do. But, they like, if you it. haven't heard that song in so long, and they still know the lyrics and everything. I just think, like, especially for the WrestleMania crowd, is like, obviously, is the most vocal crowd, in my opinion, ever, every mm-hmm. time of the year, outside of, like, maybe Royal Rumble. Oh, yeah. Um, they, I think they're the most vocal ones. And I think it's just, it would be great... Next to Puerto to have, Rico, so... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Puerto Rico is still, like... That was crazy during backlash and everything. So, mm-hmm. but I like I, I really didn't think like that song needs to come back for Russ. I mean, I hope it does. Like I know like people were bothering Drew about it. Drew's like, don't bother me. I'm not the one that has control. Just talk, talk to Triple H about it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and uh, but uh, Drew McIntyre, talk about a. I thought this guy was an absolute fucking loser because all he did was lose, lose, and ask for rematches. But mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, what a fucking loser. But after he injured CM Punk, and then he started using that to his advantage to get people to piss off. I'm like, I love this guy now. <laughs> number one number one hater now, which is crazy to see how far he goes as hating. I love it. To the point, he even does the cross leg sitting in the center of the ring. Mm-hmm. Like, like, that is the biggest insult to Punk when he did that. I was like, I love that. I like that, Drew. I was like, where was this? <laughs> you know, where was Mr... Um, I can actually trash talk Drew. Because I knew Mr. I could beat your ass Drew existed, but where was this version of Drew? I don't know. Who cares? Why should we ask? It's here. I like it. And I want him to dethrone Seth because I fucking hate Seth. I can't stand Seth. And The Rock, fuck you. You could tell The Rock even held back on <laughs> roasting Seth a bit, and he still got him real fucking good. Like, mm-hmm. I'm tired of this goof coming out dressed like in women's clothing and just... That's his gimmick. 
to just dress goofy. But his promo work is terrible. <laughs> like, I'm just like, it's the same promo every week. It's the same matches every week. Um, and if Drew takes that belt off him, I will finally, like, for once in my life, feel reassured that we won't be having Seth on TV for at least a few months. Because Seth hasn't been off my TV in fucking years. <laughs> yeah, right. He needs to go for a bit. Every wrestler needs this at one point. I mean... Speaking of which, I want to bring up his wife, actually. Not to insult her, because I do like Becky Lynch, but what the hell happened to Becky Lynch? Girl, eat a sandwich. What the fuck is going I don't, on? I don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, you can call me massages all you want, but ever since she had that kid, it's like... Not the same! I mean, no, yeah, you're right. It's, it's never been the same with her. It's never been the same with her. I don't know what it is. You uh, know? She looks... Call me a misogynist as sex as all you want, but like... It just like you can definitely tell there's a different energy with her now ever since she had her kid. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just like the reality of oh dear God, I have to live. Yes, you do. <laughs> maybe that's like, maybe like when you become a mother, like you're all about your health. Maybe that's maybe she changed her persona and attitude and all things. Maybe because she's married now. I don't know. Like it, it just definitely feel like there's a different vibe with Becky now before back then when she like when. She just won both those belts on WrestleMania. So it's like, it's a different vibe now. She, my biggest problem is that she came back and lost all that momentum. Like, who the fuck is this? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, on top of that, like, I don't want to be that critical of a wrestler's looks. Because wrestlers work fucking hard to maintain their They work know, their physique. ass off. But, like, Becky does not look healthy. Like, Becky looks a little gauntly compared to, you know, even last year. So, mm -hmm. I, I'm hoping, like, someone didn't tell her, oh, you gotta make sure you don't get fat, girl, and then that got to her head, because that happens to these females backstage, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And it looks like, you know, she got a little face facial surgery done, too. I don't understand. And then, uh, you know, coming out dressed as David Bowie, <laughs> stuff like that, uh, she just does not seem like a legitimate competitor to Rhea Ripley. It looks like Rhea Ripley would fucking eat her alive. Um, I'm not really the I w not the not the opponent I would have chosen for Rhea Ripley, honestly. Um, but Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch, both these two, they just need a long break, a long break, uh, because there's too much of uh, them on TV. And honestly, other wrestlers are just a lot more entertaining than those two. Those two are from an era where wrestling was at its lowest, <laughs> you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but as for Seth Rollins, uh, I think uh, what's going to happen with him is this is what's going to happen. The Bloodline's going to win, and so that's going to be Bloodline rules at WrestleMania. So I think they're going to throw everything they have at Cody. I think the whole Bloodline's going to come out there, but then, you know, uh, a lot of good guys from backstage are going to come out there. I feel Jay's going to come out there for a save, and Jimmy... And Jay are going to battle and all that shit. And uh, while it's Cody and Roman in the ring, Cody is going to hit uh, his finisher. He's going to go for the uh, going to go for the pin, and then Rollins is going to fucking kick him in the balls. And he's going to like look him in the eyes, you know, dramatically, and then probably deliver a pedigree. And then Roman's going to just look at stuff like what, and then go for the pin. And then the next week on Raw, Seth's going to be like. That was supposed to be my moment. You took my moment away from me. And blah, 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 you know. And that's going to lead to Cody versus Seth again. Which doesn't make any sense. Because I want Cody versus The Rock. So, booking, booking's, I, booking's I, I a hard know. job. Booking's a hard job. It, it could go either way with Seth. Like, it wouldn't surprise me. But I would just, like, it just wouldn't surprise me if they just lose. And, like, Drew finishes them off. And, like, fucks, like Seth fucks off for a couple months to work on his back issues or something like that. I don't know. Because, like, I don't think it just played off his knee again. Like, it, like it ended up being <laughs> fucked up again, yeah. for all we know. Like, it could play out either way. They could still keep Seth as a face if they really wanted to. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's like, it's it, like, it's like, you could, you could do it. You could do it. Like, make him be heel again. But at the same time, we've already gotten those matches. We're like, three or four matches of, of Cody versus Seth at this point. How many more matches we need to have this together? Mean, in general, we've gotten too much of Seth Rollins. I think the guy has had more in-ring appearances 
uh, than any WWE legend ever did when they were wrestling. Wrestlers, like, back then had way more time off than these guys do, if you didn't really notice. Like, these guys are working basically 24-7. And mm -hmm. it doesn't help uh, that Rollins just gets way more, like, screen time than the average wrestler. Uh, like, I mean, look at LA. <laughs> Let's bring him up. Uh, LA Knight. Where the fuck is this guy been? <laughs> you know? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Like, that's the thing. It's like... I don't want to... WWE with the... WWE's like, I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> Pretty much, it seems like it, unfortunately, with LA Knight. Like, I don't know what's going on with the guy. Like, ever since, like, uh, Crown Jewel, like, they killed that man's momentum, which pisses me off. I'm hoping with the Logan Paul match for WrestleMania that it ends up being, like, a four-way uh, ladder match. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. I would love... Um, I would love Logan Paul, KO, Randy... An and LA Knight. Have an LA Knight there. And have LA Knight win the damn belt. Dude, bro, and you're yeah. right. Like, a, a fatal four-way ladder match would be fucking awesome. I think so. Like, I think that would be a, a really awesome match to have, either for night one or night two. Like, I just think, like, there's got to be a way, because, like, Logan's all about high-flying. Give him a fucking ladder. You know, let him do his thing. And, like, KO don't care. He'll go, like, he don't give a shit. He'll go out there and fight. Like, Randy, probably be the only one that'll be, like, probably safe the most out of all of them he'll take it easy because his back issues mm -hmm. you know and la knight is not afraid to get up on the top of the turnbuckle so like, i don't see why he wouldn't be having issues going on a ladder uh, or this in any way la knight is like in his 40s and he can jump to the top jump. to the top third rope in one leap that's impressive as fuck dude <laughs> it is i like, can't do that the camera, the, camera, the camera makes it seem like it's not a big deal but it is a big deal no yeah i don't think people understand like how insane it is that someone can physically like, especially someone like Ellie Knight who can jump from like the the mat to the top third rope in a single leap uh, because it it's a thing of beauty in slow mo when he does that and then he turns it into a suplex. But I, yeah. I, I get I get a little like I get a little scared seeing that sometimes because I know he can't do it for like another another few months after he because <laughs> he only does it every now and then now. So. Yeah, because this is forties, like you said. Like if he was in his twenties, he'd no problem. Probably easily jump every week, no problem. But in his forties, yeah. man, all it takes is one misstep, which has happened. You know, that something bad can go down. So yeah, at the at, at the age of LA Knight is injury. They're so injury prone. I mean, look at CM Punk, like just injury after injury. <laughs> so it's got... the same issues with CM Punk. It's the damn fucking bicep tendon. It's always that. I don't know. Punk may have a shorter career than we thought. He may have a shot. I hope game. not. I hope not. That man deserves a, a WrestleMania main event, damn it. I, mean, I hope man, it happens. That man year. yeah, that man deserves a redemption run. Like he deserves to like uh, like WWE does uh, he, he I think he's earned one WrestleMania main event. Um but I still think him versus Undertaker was like his his like magnum opus. That was such a great match. Um, oh yeah, it's a fantastic match. Yeah. All right, so next Gunter <laughs> and potential contenders for WrestleMania. I did not expect Judgment Day to be the group to come out to try and, like, you know, talk down uh, Imperium. But to be fair, Imperium does nothing but lose <laughs> all the fucking yeah. time. So, yeah. can you blame Judgment Day for thinking they could pick the bones here? I don't. Uh, anyway... I thought that segment wasn't very good uh, between Judge like Damian Priest is not great on the mic. Um, Dominic, all right. I think I think it's all right. He's okay, but he's not great. You know, he's like, you know, uh, he he sometimes he messes up his uh, promos, but uh, yeah. you know, he's he looks more like the guy who should be in the background, like staring you down. And Finn Balor should probably. be in the promo, but uh, tiny little Finn Balor ain't gonna intimidate Gunter. So. <laughs> right. And as for Dominic, he can't even talk on the mic. No one lets him. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody allows him. The crowd does not. And you think it's fake. It's not fake. It's real. I thought it was fake, too. Someone sent me uh, footage when they were in the arena. And it, it, it's authentic, bro. It is authentic. Like, the camera, he's painting the camera, and everyone in the crowd is going, Bah! And, like, their faces are red and their vein on their neck is popping out. People are screaming at him to shut the fuck up. I'm like, <laughs> it's great. 
It's good. It's good. It's good. I hope Dominic has a long, successful career. Uh, he's making his dad proud for sure here. And uh, who's the name of the guy? The other guy who's with Judgment Day again? <laughs> Bro, what's his Oh, name? JD McDonough. That yeah, that Jack. <laughs> Nobody Dude even knows the name. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> Gunter. Gun <laughs> when that came out of Gunter, I laughed because like Gun uh, Gunter is supposed to be like uh, this ring is sacred. <laughs> and he he went for like a wrestling uh, insult on him. Uh, I think I don't know who Gunter's opponent's gonna be, but it's nobody from Judgment Day. Uh, I I don't even know what the point of that was. Uh, and there's I no I don't, I don't know what they're gonna do with Gunther. I really don't know. It's like he is hyped. He, they have built that man up so much, just as much as Roman. I don't know what they're gonna do with this guy. Like eventually he's gonna have to take eat a pin and lose that belt. And that's the thing. It's like I don't know if you have anyone there that's just as good as Gunther. You know? No, that's like the thing. He, he, yeah. You're right. He's the best champion there. I think so. By a long shot. But it's like, man, like they treat the, inter like they, I, I don't, I don't, okay, I'll take this back. I don't feel they've treated the title as secondary. I feel like they've given Gunter almost a main title like run, but he's just, he hasn't been fighting main competitors and that's the problem. He's got to, he's going to have to eventually beat a Cody Rhodes. He's eventually going to have to beat uh, a fucking Seth Rollins. But all they've really done is thrown Gunter like, uh, what, fucking Ricochet? <laughs> they threw him fucking Braun Strowman. They threw him fucking uh, Nakamura. But they haven't thrown him, they haven't fed Gunter one of the bigger guys. And he needs, he needs to pin one of those dudes. Because he's a fucking certified G. He's a certified badass. That's his whole thing. And... I think the best opponent to pick for him is injured. It was going to be CM Punk in my eyes. I was like, you could have put CM Punk against him. And if he beat CM Punk, Gunter would have been a G, <laughs> you know, but that's not going to happen. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, kind of concerned that they're probably going to overlook Gunter at WrestleMania, bro. Like that, that would be very insulting because they're, they're giving, I think, Kevin, uh, not Kevin, I was like, Logan Paul a pretty good opponent for his title. But, like, I don't know what they're going to do with Gunter. You can tell it was supposed to be Brock Lesnar, though. You can absolutely tell that was the plan. Oh, uh, yeah. Especially, especially like, if you, I don't know if you saw the interviews with him. And he just looks so fucking, like, just so sad. It's like, you know, like, one of my main milestones and hopes I would ever have was going against Brock Lesnar and that doesn't seem like that's ever going to happen now and he just looks so upset about it it's like oh man yeah and the unfortunate circumstances that occurred it's yeah it's just probably never going to happen at this point no not anytime soon at least that would have been an amazing match probably the best one of uh, at Mania if and, and it would have been with Cowboy Brock you know and what I liked about Cowboy Brock is he actually tried I didn't like the Beast Incarnate Lesnar gimmick because he didn't even look like he wanted to be there. But Cowboy Brock looked like he was enjoying himself, and I think he would have given Gunter the match he deserved uh, and made him look really good. I know people are trying to like online are trying to like say like, oh well, you know, Braun Breaker is like basically Lesnar's replacement now, and is because they like you know they had him this past you know this past Friday just basically squash another NXT guy in like less than a minute. You know, on it was a nice Smackdown. spear. It was a nice spear he delivered too. It was a nice spear. He's probably the best spear in the industry right now. It looked but like it like, fucking hurt. <laughs> are you really gonna have though, Braun Breaker? Though he's already got a belt still with NXT, as far as I'm aware. Uh, with uh, Baron Corbin back on NXT, are you gonna like try to hype him up and try to build him up quickly to, in order to take on Gunther? I don't think so. Oh. You know, so like, but I feel like I don't know. Maybe it's like. I don't know if Hunter is just like looking at this right now and saying like I can't have Priest go and like cash in on Cody or Seth right now to make it make sense without making him look weak and, and stupid. I need to <laughs> yeah. pivot him like how I did with Theory and have him go against a mid tier belt now and to take that belt. I don't know if that's the main reason why maybe Hunter is just looking at that and thinking to himself that's what he has to do. Mm -hmm. Because story wise, this doesn't make any sense to inject the judgment day into this whole Bloodline storyline right now doesn't make sense, yeah. but no, I, it, right. who yeah. knows? No, no, you're 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 absolutely right. Yeah, um, man, dude, it's I, it's, just, it's it's exciting. It's exciting because like I, it could go either way. 
It's uh, so unpredictable. And this so is this is this is where it should be because wrestling was too predictable for a while. <laughs> so, uh, oh right, we forgot about a a, a return here. Mister Rey Mysterio came out with some gray on the beard. You saw that gray on the beard, and he's got a weird ass fucking luchador mask on. It looks like he's like. Got some impressions of eyebrows, like he's pissed off or something. Like it looked weird. Yeah, it looked his weird. Usual mask. I like the gray in his beard, though. I liked that. I was like, okay, you know, it's like, it's like to see a veteran Rey Mysterio is mind blowing to me because he was like, he was the the, the small young hip wrestler when I was a kid. You know, everybody, yeah. even if you weren't a wrestling fan, people in school were like, Boyaka, Boyaka, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. 619 and uh, the, the 619 do you know the 619 is actually one of the like one of the highest voted like finishers uh, I forgot which website I, I saw it on but it was like number 3 I was like huh? <laughs> I was like people like the 619 a lot I was like I hate the 619 uh, but Ray makes it look good uh, yeah I know veteran Ray came out there to help uh, basically assist Carlito who was about to get a beat down and uh, Carlito, uh, he, he won the match, and it's been set up. It's, I think it's going to be Ray versus uh, Santos Escobar at Mania, but that doesn't seem all that exciting to me. Does it seem exciting to you? <laughs> I, I I don't know. Santos Escobar, like, it, like in Ray Mysterio, I guess you could do it. I, it really just depends on how things play out the next couple of weeks with WrestleMania. It's obviously it's not the focal point right now, um, and like, it, like the whole LWO thing is like it was built up really well with when they did um, Backlash, mm-hmm. and then like it just kind of like fizzled out as time went on. And even with Santos Escobar and his heel run right now, it feels like it's kind of fizzled out a bit. I'm hoping with it would be great. If he had someone like Andrade now back in the mix of things, work with Santo Escobar, that would be interesting. Oh, that would be so. really cool, actually. That would, Andrade, so. Andrade and Rey Mysterio had some banger matches on SmackDown like two years ago, or three mm-hmm. years ago, actually. There were actually some of the best matches I've seen in a long time, and there were televised matches. I was like, wow, these two are fucking incredible. But Santos Escobar, nothing about him really makes me go, oh, that guy's a generational talent. Uh, which I feel bad, but like the company really seems to believe in him as a heel, so they're, yeah. Uh, the LWO, uh, this is not not the LWO like uh, I grew up with or <laughs> you grew up with, but uh, mm-hmm. I'll still take I'll still take an LWO over no LWO, and I like that mm-hmm. it's led by Rey Mysterio, like homage to Eddie Guerrero. So yeah, I think that's what's gonna. What's going to happen between you know, Rey Mysterio and Santos? <laughs> Believe it or not, I think there's going to be another heel turn <laughs> in the middle of their match. And I think they're going to give the win to Santos. Because um, I think Rey has no problem, you know, giving the rub. Uh, so that's what's going to happen there. As, oh, as for Logan Paul. Um, it's him and Kevin Owens, right? There's no, like... No other stipulations. No, it's gonna be a one-on-one. Is that confirmed? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure. Yeah. That's a little disappointing. I feel like the United States title could be like defended, like you said, in a fatal four-way in a ladder match. But that's about that. Um, who else do we? I was gonna talk. I was gonna bring a. No, that's about it. I think I think we covered all. We covered good ground here. We the plan was an hour. We could discuss like how Bailey's doing right now. Like, we, I don't know, it's up to you. We could discuss that. Oh, the briefly. the the betrayal with damage control. What's your, like, what's your, yeah, what's your thoughts on that so far? Honestly, um, they got me to root for Bailey, and I don't even like Bailey. <laughs> mm-hmm. They got me to root for Bailey. Um, I think they did it well. Uh, for a minute, I was like, ah, oh, they're gonna do the female version of the Bloodline storyline, but they 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 did it pretty well. Um, and so I'm rooting for Bailey. Uh, they they made me feel sorry for her, and Oscar though like Oscar and Kyrie Sane, uh, they don't have to say much, but they've been doing a great job <laughs> with that, like, like this whole thing here. Uh, I don't really have much to say other than that though. Other than I, I I'm glad for Bailey to finally like 
not be a cringe heel, not be a cringe baby face, but actually, you know, make you root for her. Agreed. Uh, yeah. But other than that, I think we're getting ready to wrap it up. We had about an hour in, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us know what your thoughts are on the upcoming uh, card for WrestleMania. Your predictions, please. This, yeah, uh, please. Th- th- so we can steal some ideas for the next show. <laughs> Well, I mean, I just like to hear like the, what the audience is thinking about, like what they think is how things are going to play out. Because again, like I, it's all about the feedback and input from you guys. I want to see you guys' thoughts on what you think is going to play out for WrestleMania for night one, night two, and like what matches are you predicting? Who is the outcome? Are you thinking to do it? I'd love to hear that in the comments. So I read all the comments. I'm looking forward to seeing him. He does. Delta Delta's everywhere. <laughs> he, he pays attention to the comment section. I do too. Uh, and it really makes me happy to see that there are fans that actually do pay attention to the program. Because it's a, it's kind of hard to talk about wrestling on the main channel when, like, you know, there's, like, half the chat's like, wrestling's gay! <laughs> yeah, wrestling's gay for the most part. Well, it is, like, but... It's like, you, you gotta move on. We gotta focus on the, the gaming and the soul content, you know. It's like, so oh, it's, nice break. it's like, wrestling's gay! I'm like, you're literally playing a video game. Yeah. That's gayer than wrestling right now. <laughs> Like, I mean, wrestling isn't making me cringe out anymore. Uh, and that's that's all thanks to um, wrestlers being able to swear. Uh, those um, those press conferences have really been helping the talent. That press conference was really good. Except, yeah, except that press conference didn't help Seth. Like, God, I, I can't stand Seth with his goofy outfit just standing there on stage next to The Rock. It's almost insulting yeah. to me. <laughs> you know, I also ask you, too, like, didn't a hell segment with The Rock? This past, you know, on uh, on Friday, did not feel like there's like some underlying tension now with Roman, like with him and Roman right now, because yeah. the whole thing of like saying, I need you to acknowledge me and everything and stuff like that, and he just seemed like he's just like pissed off everything. I don't know. I'm wondering like how things are gonna play out with that, like if they if that's really gonna escalate even further from there on. So the vibes I got from it, in character anyway, in character, not like in real life, yeah. but the vibes yeah, I got from the vibes I got from it in character is. Like Roman wanted Rock to acknowledge him because Roman's like, I want you to remember that this is my, you know, title. This is my main event. This is my show, kind of thing, right? Because yeah. The Rock basically took over the Bloodlines like spotlight. Pretty he took much. the took the Bloodline spotlight. Um, but I, I love, I loved watching how Solo Sequoia was, could like he was trying not to laugh so many times during this whole thing. <laughs> Just like, oh yeah, he like he always. Puts his head down like he's going to scratch his nose, but you know he's just, like, hiding his laughter. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I think what's going to what's going on here with The Rock and Roman is the, that tension that we're seeing here is going to uh, show up in their match against, you know, Cody and Seth. And it's, you know, it's going to be used to create some doubt in The Rock and Roman that they're going to lose because of the tensions. But they're going to win in the end, I think, through bullshit memes, obviously. Um... And yeah, no, that's that's really basically it. I think uh, in story, Roman is just egotistical, like he's supposed to be, and he doesn't mm-hmm. want to share the spotlight. And that's that's it. I mean, like that is that was Roman's character from the beginning, as a heel. I don't want to share the spotlight. This is my show. I'm number one. You have to acknowledge it. And I'm kind of glad he did that here because for a while I was like, Roman, are you really going to just let the Rock basically like give me the mic? Let me do this he's- like. I yep. agree, because like it's like you like yeah, say what you will about the Rock, but like you know, Roman's been holding it down for what the four, like the past what four years at this point. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, who are you? Why are you here? Kind of like I don't give a shit. You're the Rock. Like I've run this thing. I'm here week like well, I was at one point week to week versus you not being here. You know, yeah. Roman does like show up every once every quarter basically, yeah. but still he's still the most like talked about athlete in, in the active roster. You know. So yeah. it's like I would I don't blame him for having that frustration. High so. high merch seller too. High merch seller. So, um, what I think, uh, yeah. I, but I, I was kind of glad to see it too because I was like, man, like it felt like this is like, like is Roman the champion or is Rock the champion kind of thing, right? Because like the champion was too quiet for the last few weeks, and he f- finally like him like when the Rock's like hit you smack and boom, and he stopped him. That right mm-hmm. there, in storyline, I think that's going to be the catalyst. That's the catalyst. Like, The Rock, you saw the expression change on The Rock after, like, Roman basically stopped him midway with his exit promo. 
that was great. <laughs> I was like, beautiful, well done. I love the tension. Um, so I, I, I'm looking very much looking forward to that. Uh, oh, what was I going uh, to mention? Was going to mention uh, again something about Coachman I saw recently. Oh well, <laughs> I forgot what it was. Anyway, we're at the we're we're we're, we're getting ready to wrap it up here. So um, Delta, what do you want to tell people before we go? Uh, thank you guys for sticking around and, and asking us. You know, on a weekly basis, the last couple of weeks. You know, where's the show at? Where's the show at? Are you guys gonna upload a new episode? Mm-hmm. I understand that like things have been. I've been at my end to be kind of like you know holding me up a bit. So I do appreciate people asking about it. We do plan on being back here again on a weekly basis. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for sticking with us. Appreciate yeah, it. We really do. So be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. With that being said, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.